Okay, I'm a big believer of starting uh, with the most difficult thing. So I'm going to start with the valve body. I'm going to remove all these bolts. Um, and I'm going to orient it that way. Uh, I'm going to place the bolts on the bench next to it uh, in the order they appear in this orientation. This is how I oriented them. I put them on this paper towel so they have less chance to roll away. Okay, we're going to remove this retainer holding the solenoids in. There's one on the other side as well we're going to do. These are 8 millimeters. bolts back in like this, put this aside. Okay, now uh, we should be able to just remove each solenoid. It's important you keep track of which solenoids which, so this is sort of my neutral position for my valve body and any sort of placement I put on the table is going to be in reference to the valve body like this. So just put these to the side, give them a twist and then pull and they should come right out. I'm going to remove the manual valve just comes out like that. Get the cover next, held it by these tens. Okay, with those bolts out, we can remove this upper part. here. We've got these two spacers. And we got some check balls here. Okay, so we're gonna remove these sleeves here. And there's should be three check balls. Oops here, one went flying. Uh, with springs. Now it's really important, a lot of people will do this. It's important you do not grab the check balls with a magnet, a magnet tool. Because when you do that, these check balls are steel. So they're a ferrous material. They're going to become magnetized when you put a magnet on them. And that's going to cause all kinds of metal shavings and stuff that are attached to them which could inhibit their function. So do not pick up these check balls with a magnet. So We'll take these balls, let's just flip this over. And the two springs underneath the check balls. That's the last one. Okay, we're gonna flip this guy around. Uh, we got two eights holding on the separator plate. Something spring loaded in there. Right, so there goes the plate. Let's put that to the side. And we got a check ball here with a spring. Another spring right here. There it is. Almost lost the check ball. So I'm going to remove these check balls and spring and put them in their corresponding locations on the separator plate.
next we have, <coughs> this is the damping valve, and then the spring on the damping valve. And right, next we're going to remove all the valves. Um, this is on the side of the body in its reference position. And we have this little roller in here. It's going to take a pair of needle nose. And uh, just push that down through the hole. And then grab it on the bottom. Sometimes you need to flip it over and just help the valve a little bit by pushing it. But you got to be careful because you don't want to nick anything. Okay. I tap it on that soft mallet. So here's the sleeve for the valve. And we have the valve and the spring. Alright, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lubricate the valve with transmission fluid. And the bore. And we're going to stand it up, stand the valve body up like this. And we're going to just drop the valve. Now see the the valve should drop at its own weight, um, but sometimes it'll get cocked to the side, so just fix it and let it drop. And then see, that's pretty much in, but it's not down all the way. I kind of have to push it a little bit. So that's the test. And then also, you could turn it upside down afterwards, and it should drop out on its own. But as you can see, it needs some help. I was having some trouble with my camera this day and wasn't able to get this footage, but um, I was able to take some pictures. So what I did is these valve bores need to be polished. They need to be repolished with a very fine grit sandpaper. Uh, 800 to 1000 grit uh, works pretty well. Um, you don't really want to go any lower than that. And what you do is you just wrap it into a roll like you see here and um, a tight roll and put it all the way down into the, into the bore let the roll expand so it's touching the walls and then just um, spin the roll and if you can go back and forth and this is how you polish the bore out so you would keep doing this until uh, the valve falls under its own weight in both directions okay. So you just push it in with your thumb and it'll come out. There are these little tabs that just fell out. These tabs, um, they will, they hold in the valves from the back. Oh. There's the valve. Since that tab fell out, we should be able to get this valve out of there. So there's a little cap. Should be a spring. Yep. And then we have another valve in here. There we go. Okay, on the other side. We have two more valve bores, um, and we got these little plugs here. There we go. That's when we have another little stopper there. There we go, finally. Alright, I was having a really hard time getting this bore out. What I found worked was if you pry the valve back so it's under spring pressure and then let it go so it slams against the back of the bore, that will help it come out. So it finally seems to be coming out now.
There's the cap. See, the valves should just fall right out. All these valves are sticking. We're going to have to resurface all these bores. So this is how I'm laying the valve body with the valves right next to the bores they go in. All right, this one we have another roller, another roll pin. Just gonna pry up and out. Looks like this is un this might be under some tension. Yeah, so just gonna hold that. Just put that aside. There it comes. Okay, this guy, we got another roll pin. Gonna hold my finger there. Pull the roll pin out. Does it want to come down its own? This one we have another one of these little plates. There she comes. Oh, there it goes. On the other side, we got two more, and they're both roll pins. There you go. Okay, one more. Another roll pin. This one is going to might be under some tension. Okay, the next thing I did was to clean the top and bottom valve body assemblies. I did this by taking a brand new clean container and uh, filling it with mineral spirits and then uh, soaking the upper and lower valve bodies in there for 20 minutes each and then immediately drying with compressed air. I also um, did the separator plates and a couple other parts as well. Okay, so now uh, valve body and and all the valves are all cleaned, so we're going to lubricate each valve and then reinsert it into the valve body. pin there, we have a dowel pin right here, and we have a spring and a check ball in these two holes right here. And then we have a check ball right here in this little oval hole. Okay, we're going to carefully place the plate on, make sure it's in the right direction. The holes will line up. 
and make sure that you don't knock these two check balls off their springs. Now we're going to place this upper valve body on top. Okay, next we have this plate here, which I cleaned. I'm going to bring these down finger tight. We're going to tighten these bolts to 98 inch pounds. Okay, now we have the damping valve and spring with a new um, ceiling ring on it. Gonna drop that in. Um, then we have uh, a spring and check ball. One goes here. This is the bigger spring. And the other one goes down here. This is the smaller spring. Okay, now we're going to put the separator plate on. And we get the two bolts. Okay, we're going to torque these down to the same spec as the last bolts. Alright, so we're going to replace the solenoids now. I'm going to lube them up with transmission fluid. I replaced all the O-rings on each solenoid. Lastly, we have the manual valve. That's it, we're done with the valve body.